Good morning, folks. We've got some very interesting stories to hit today. Had a special video out last night, and the sun fired a CME at Venus and Mars. We'll start there with our star at spaceweathernews.com. The majority of the last 24 hours was quiet, coronal hole turning out on the north, active regions creeping in up there and on the south as well. But watch top left at the end. A fairly solid CME is released from the trailing part of the sunspot group just as the leading edge is becoming visible to us here at Earth. It was a pretty strong event. It occurred behind the limb but still managed to register a fairly solid C-class flare on the X-ray flux. Good chance this flare was actually M-class and the peak energy was unseen because the sunspot is still over the limb. CME is not heading at Earth, but it is heading at Mars and Venus. For a moment, I want to replay that eruption a few times so you can notice the tsunami of plasma in the atmosphere, the sun's corona, blasting away from the CME eruption point onto the Earth-facing half of the sun. Let's go back to that JPL orbital diagram for a moment because we need perspective on that incoming comet or mini-planet everyone is discussing. It is incoming, but only sort of. We'll never get inside of Saturn's orbit. The size range could be up to 100 kilometers wide, they say, which is a darn good-sized object, but still not exactly a planet. And that recent cometary activity they observed suggests the initial size estimates were high. It's interesting, but it's not going to be visible to us or anything. Maybe the best telescopes. Heading up to the satellites next, where before and after of the last year in California is quite bleak. Eastern Range in Texas got all their spring water this year. And in the spirit of tracking water around the world, we note that the new data from Sentinel-6 is coming in by the day. Up there with Jason, peering down in tandem. Up next is a meteor inclusion that is helping them to discover clues about the early solar system. But frankly, that's far less interesting to me than they're calling the splatter on the outside of the rock a function of it melting as it entered our atmosphere. Problem is, we see the same splatter melt on moon rocks from the Apollo mission and they never experienced re-entry. In truth, this has micronova spew and splat written all over it. Indeed, they say the outside of the rock could not be well studied. Lucky them. Folks, hopefully we remember this, one of the key papers used to debunk the idea that the world turns over. Two issues. The most important is that when the world tilts and tilts back to put the poles in their original places, it darn well better look like the poles haven't moved when you look over millions of years. These papers debunk Hapgood's 7-degree tilt, not the 90-degree turn, supported by historical catastrophists, Einstein, Major White, and the Pentagon documents he stole. But beyond that, the second problem is there was a correction to that paper and it was far less cited. The correction put some of the pole positions on opposite sides of the globe from what had been initially reported, which is as wrong as is humanly possible in a search to locate polar position. Of course, this was exactly at the time when the CIA was infiltrating the key geology departments in the country, all while hiding the real reportings under the rug. Anyway, none of that matters because as of today, all those papers have been debunked. Not only did those old ones fail to debunk the 90 degree tilt and tilt back, but they don't even accurately show what they were trying to show, that polar position over time has been constant. As the wording in the work is that the notion that our spin axis has been stable for 100 million years is now greatly challenged, we give a nod to these authors here. Last but not least, nine point sources of light showed up in over a 30 minute period back in 1950 in a tiny slice of the sky. They are almost certain it was not contamination, but that leaves them with only one explanation, objects appearing in geosynchronous orbit. Problem is, there weren't supposed to be any, certainly not in such a cluster all at once. The options are secret government satellites, UFOs, or what they consider impossible. A number of stars went nova in one tiny part of space, pretty much all at the exact same time. We greatly appreciate your support. Tons more about the poll shifting in our disaster series. Check out last night's Nova special video if you missed it. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.